Welcome to another edition to Talking With W.I.T. Kevin and Sons. This episode is brought to you by RMK Productions. We showcase people you should know. Our mission is through the power of story to uplift with our voices, inspire, share experiences, perspectives using the framework of teaching, learning, and modeling. Our purpose is very simple. It's hope, helping other people every single day. I created a very special uh, episode on this podcast, learning the secrets of highly effective people. I've learned through my associates, my friends, that successful people create a framework in their day-to-day lives that enhance their lives day in and day out. Today's podcast and our guests will share the secrets of how they live a highly effective life. Not only will they share their stories, but they will share with you simple and doable steps on how to turn bad habits into good, master small behaviors, turn them that leads to big behaviors, as well as just being good human beings. Today, my very special guest is a personal friend, smart as a tack. <laughs> um, not hard on the eyes either. I, I have to say that. She is an author. She is a motivational speaker. She has two books. One is a best-selling um, author, The Spiritual Path to Prosperity. The other one, which we're going to talk about that book today, Manifest into, into Invest. Manifest and Invest. That's the title of the book. Her, she will share her story of her childhood and how she's gone through, just like the rest of us, some of the struggles. And now she lives a life of abundance. Today's guest has her redefined her expertise, and has elevated her personal and professional growth and will provide us with relevance to understanding how to remove financial and emotional barriers that will give you financial freedom. Today, you will learn about how to have a good relationship with money, the five money blocks. We also learn women with money, and if you stay around long enough to hear the whole podcast, maybe she'll so- share with you her secrets on how to get out of debt. And with that said, let's welcome my good friend and successful entrepreneur, Miss Don. Don, San- I- I'm screwing up all the- day long. Santorelli. I can't even say your last name. Santoriello. It's Santoriello. So yeah, and uh, certified you- pa- you know, the the reason why uh, I'm not going to redo this over again, because I have to make sure I'm authentic. You know, you do know I suffer from uh, a TBI. So a lot of times when I get stressed out or whatever the case may be, uh, words seem to disappear in my head and whatever. So that's enough about me. But I want to go back and, and say this person is like a tornado when it comes through life. She's exciting. She lives life. You know, you hear that uh, term. You know, dance like uh, no one's watching. She lives life like it's her, her last day, last day on earth. And believe it or not, she loves like she was writing her own story. Dawn, how are you doing? Thank you for that introduction, Kevin. And then I want to add something. Not only am I a one-time bestseller, I'm a two-time bestseller because the second book, Manifest and Invest, also became a bestseller. And really exciting, it became the best financial book of 2024. But by um, Best Holistic Life magazine. So, um, but yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited. This is going to be fun, everybody. So let's get started. And thank you so much, Kevin, for having me. Where should I begin? Well, believe it or not, I, I think we should let people get to know who you are. Because a lot of times when we talk money, um, it's an uncomfortable subject for both male and female, young and old, or however you may identify. It's a a not a very comfortable um conversation, but we're all chasing a dollar that does not want to be caught. We're all in financial situations, whereas we think we're in a good situation. And we found out during COVID that a lot of us that thought um, happy days were here again, found out that the, um, the good times turned into bad times and we were at square one all over again. And that's the reason why I said, let's talk about your story. Sure. And then the, the key thing is, it's you know, I do this a lot of times with health and fitness. I talk about the relationship that um, people have with money versus their health. But we're going to talk about, you know, healthy relationships with money. But it would automatically 
be assumed if we see your life today that you've always had money. Oh no. Is that a true or false statement? That and is let's hear your the story. Furthest, yeah, that is the furthest from the truth. Okay, I just say it like it is. So I hope I don't offend people or anything. I was born with a plastic spoon in my mouth, not a silver spoon. I call it the white ghetto in Park Slope, Brooklyn, New York. Um, I mean, we I was so poor that I had a black hole in my tooth. If you read my book, you'll see it in there. It was horrible. Like we my grandmother, she raised us because my mom and my dad were out living their lives doing drugs. Um, didn't even know who my real dad was. Turns out it was a different guy. I found that out when I was 40. So there's a lot of chaos going on there. And in and out of different foster homes with my sister, separated from my brother. Um, and it, so it was like nothing but turmoil. But what that taught me was I'm a survivor. Never give up. I never want to be poor ever again. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. I have nobody to rely on but myself. And I'm going to make it at all costs. Um, so that actually propelled me and motivated me. And then also I was fortunate enough to get adopted into a loving family um, who was so strict, but that also helped me too. Cause again, I just was like, I was a geek in school. I was like, okay, I'm going to study hard, get a good job. I'm going to make a lot of money and life is going to be good. And well, I studied hard. Then I got a little sidetracked because another byproduct of growing up poor and not having any attention, trying to fight for attention is I developed this thing where I want to be famous. I want to be an actress and a model. I was finally pretty enough back then. I think I was, you know, bushy eyebrows, braces, no guys like me. So did try to do that. Got a little bit of success here and there, but obviously I became something else. So I didn't really make it. Um, but that was actually good because rejection was so good. It taught me how to survive in the field I'm in now, which is I, I'm a certified financial planner. And early in your career, you are constantly getting rejected. It's nothing but rejection. Cold calling, as they call it, smiling and dialing for dollars. Um, so I started out working for MetLife and I would call on orphans accounts. I was up in Scranton and I'd have to drive on back roads late at night, calling these people, you get to their house, reviewing their insurance policies. They're all mad and upset, screaming at you. And you didn't even do anything. You're just there to fix the problem. So there were those days. Um, and one time I remember this was so, so I guess humbling and so sad. I, um, it was January, I think it was January 7th, it was cold. And I was stuck in a parking garage. I literally did not have, my credit card was maxed out. I couldn't get out of the parking garage. So I'm sitting there waiting, cars are piling up behind me, I'm waiting for the attendant to come. They finally came and I was mortified. He just opened up, he's like, let's like, just go. I went home and I just cried. I was sitting on my porch, I just bawled. I was like, what is going on here? I'm like, I'm doing the right things. I'm smart, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I would never do anything to hurt my clients. I'm trying to find new clients. I'm trying to build this rehab for my, um, the house that I was living in. I was going to turn into a rental property. I'm like, what is going on, God? Why? What am I doing wrong? Please help me. Um, and then a miracle happened. Later that year, I had my first year where I made over six figures. And I was like, oh, thank you, God. And I think I needed to go through being poor, getting lifted up a little, and then getting knocked down. Because I had to learn and make sure I really learned how you build something out of nothing. Like I had no family. I had two family members, but they didn't do business with me when I moved out of New York to Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, that's like an old, old boys network. So women and outsiders were like, weren't really taken seriously. So it was like a struggle. But I was like, I got this. I'm never giving up. Um, I did side jobs. I was building my house. So I helped my neighbor doing their construction. I actually had to, I bartended at this shady bar because I didn't want clients to see me. I'd be like, oh my God, they're going to think I'm a failure. So I had a lot of stuff to work out and issues to go through before I finally had success. Um, and then when you experience success again, life tests you again. So it was kind of, you know, I didn't maintain that until the only time I actually did maintain it, which is kind of funny. Like you mentioned COVID and you said that's when the world fell apart. Well, that's when my world exploded and it expanded in ways that I didn't even think was possible. I like, uh, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, you did the same, you, you did the same thing my, 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 my brother did. Uh, I, I, I had him on my podcast once and um, I had given him some, some type of cues that um, when he was either talking too fast or going off, 
that um and i was explaining to him how to answer a question i told him basically before he answered the question to count one two three four five and what he did every time he answered a question he was mouthing it but he was saying it one two three four five and they would answer the question but anyway what 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 i wanted to do i didn't want to cut you off um and if anyone has um picks up um uh, dawn's book um manifest and invest yeah. uh, you can tell by how excited she is the the book reads as fast as she talks so i'm going to ask her to slow down a little bit so we okay. can catch up but i i do want to ask this question this is what i asked um the question that popped up in my book when I was reading your story, which is like the third chapter uh, in your book. It doesn't start off with your story, mm -hmm. but you, you said you grew up poor. Yeah. Now, I, you know, when people hear me talk and they've said this a lot of times, they they feel sorry for me because they they, they said that you grew up poor. I, I never knew I was poor until I had a rich college roommate. Hey, before we go on and, and talk about your successes in this bi business, because um. I always thought the poor was a mindset. I didn't think it was part of an, an environment. What What is your definition of being poor? Being poor, I guess it was like you're not having any money, just feeling like you don't belong anywhere and just, yeah, how it just, yeah, just feeling like, I guess, yeah, lack, lack would be a good word. Lack of love, lack of resources, money. Um, so that's, I guess how I would describe poor. So it isn't just money; it's just like everything. So I felt lack in everything. Okay, but you 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 said you were adopted with loving yeah. parents. Yes. Correct. Yeah, so that was, you, was ten years old. So you you weren't you, you weren't um you weren't for a lack of love because someone in, chose you in in their home. You had a roof over your head. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You had clean you had clean clothes. Correct. You had transportation to and from school. Correct. All right. So I, I don't know one child is born with a bank bank account. Um, so I'm I'm confused on what poor so is. And the reason my grandmother taking care of me and my sister, and she had to give us up for adoption because she couldn't afford us. So Okay. That's so in, in your mind, poor was an, an emotional state of mind. It yeah. wasn't exactly a physical state of being. Correct. All right. So this motivation, and um, I, I'm going to go back. You were a actress, an aspiring actress. All right. You yes. found your inner inner beauty, and you wanted to to be famous. Tell me about right. your first job, your first acting job. Let's see. Well, they were like they weren't even really acting jobs. They were like being extras. Like I was in Sex in the City. Um, they called us rotisserie girls. So we go there, and it's like tons of beautiful women. There's even like a Playboy model there. So the director lines us all up. There's like probably like 80 of us, 100. And he's, he points to me and he's like, you come over here. And I was like, immediately, I was like, well, what's wrong with me? <laughs> and, uh, and then he picks four other girls. He's like, you girls, you're going to do a special scene today. You go sit over there and wait. And then we were the rotisserie girls. So in front of like Sarah Jessica and all the other girls, we were there to like roll over like rotisserie chickens so where they're like, oh, look at those hot 20 year olds and look at us, we're so, we're thirties, we're getting old. Um, so that was one job that I did as an extra. Um, almost my would have been success could have propelled me to stardom was I auditioned for a role on Tracy on Sex and the City, I'm not Sex and the City, The Sopranos. And I made it to the callback. I went to Sober Cup Studios to do the final audition. Um, but they picked someone else. It was between me and the other girl. And but well, it's it's it's, it's nice to to be be picked. And I know yeah. there's one part of your story that you you brought up the fact that you while you were trying to get your education, you had bartend um, mm -hmm. a, a little bit. You had also, I, I think that um, your book said you had invested and in, and in got a uh, a house or something like that. So yeah. the story leading yeah. up to the fact that you had. Um, parked your car into a parking lot and realized that, you know, you had tapped out your, your credit card or debit card and couldn't get out. Uh, do you remember the nice man that actually let you with a buy, let you get out of the parking lot and take your car home? Do you remember him? Um, I just remember he was a nice guy. I don't remember anything else. I was just mortified. I was like, let me out of here. But he just, he's like, okay, go on through. And I was like, okay, thank you. And then I just went home and cried. Was, all right. Yeah. So we, we, we've all had our, our, our struggles and to that nice guy, 
if you remember in, in New York that you gave someone a buy, we want to thank you for being kind to a stranger, as not many people are. Um, let's talk, let's let's fast forward into the day. You are a certified um uh, financial um planner. Planner. What is that? Well, it's it's exactly what it says, certified financial planner. So what I do, I have to have for your education. I had to pass a two day test, I mean, a one day test, six hours. I had to take six different courses, get, um, have somebody like vouch for me, who is also a, already a certified financial planner, and do a project. And the pass rate on passing that on the first time is like 62%. So I was so happy that I passed it on the first time round because um, it was the hardest test. And I'm a geek, I'm very smart. And that was, literally the hardest test I've ever had to take. So, and All so right. what I do is I work with clients and I help put them um, on the road to financial freedom, put financial plans together together for them that it's custom to their situations. Um, so I basically just change people's lives, put them in a better spot than when I've met them before. You know? All right. And, and who exactly needs a financial planner? A planner. I would say anyone, um, whether you're just starting out you need to get on track, make sure you got the basics. Um, and now what I work a lot with our pre-retirees, I show them how to retire in the 0% tax bracket. So I put on workshops at Westchester University for people and I show them, hey, this is, you know, you've accumulated all this money, but now let's make sure it's in the right buckets. Because a lot of what I see is people have money, but it's not properly allocated the way it should be. And they haven't addressed issues such as tax rate risk, market race, rate risk, inflation, long-term care, living too long, market volatility. So there's a lot of risk that people aren't aware of. So I would definitely say, especially if you're near in retirement, get a financial planner. If you're just starting out, you could hire someone just to get the basics. Um, but always, it's good to have a professional guide you. You wouldn't go to, to guide yourself if you have something medically wrong, you go to see a doctor. So same thing, people need to work with professionals. All right, thanks for clarifying and finding that. Welcome. Um, we learned a lot of things uh, about ourselves during COVID. And one of the things were a lot of people probably needed your services. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people were living what they call was was the good life. They had beautiful cars. They had fancy homes. Um, they took um, uh, very nice va va vacations and they, they shared elaborate gifts and good times with family and friends. COVID exposed a lot of people to, um, through their financial uh, situations. Um, we found out a lot of people weren't as liquid as they thought they were. And they were actually, and I've read this in a book called on um, the psychology of money is that most people that think they're, they're rich financially are probably living from pay to pay, paycheck to paycheck. Like most of us, they yeah. just happen to be um, in debt with some prettier things. Mm -hmm. So that brings it to the point when we talked about, and I want to educate people on what the relationship with money should be. And how do you, as a planner, talk to someone about having a good relationship with money? Well, it all we... begins with... Oh, sorry. Go, <laughs> you got go, me excited go there. Okay. Go, go, all... go ahead and be excited. Okay, I'll talk slow because you know me, I get so excited. It all begins with mindset. Like I'll share my story of how COVID changed me. I was still kind of living in lack and always worried, okay, where is the next client going to come from? Where is my next uh, fee going to come from. So I was still in that. Then as soon as COVID hit, it's ironic, but I let that all go. I wasn't afraid because I was like, well, it's not just me in this boy. Everybody's in this together. A lot of people are out of work. So I'm like, what do I have to fear? I'm like, let's see, what could I use this time? Um, I wrote my first book because I was like, well, now's the time. I just got my CFP designation. So and now I have time. So let me write this book. And then I had to pivot because I was actually going to, with my spiritual coach, Lynn Renee McDonald. So I'm going to give her a shout out. She actually inspired my book. She said, I see you writing a financial book on spirituality. And I was like, you're absolutely out of your mind because I would lose clients. They're going to think I'm too woo-woo. But what I did is I embraced my woo-woo-ness and I made a book. We ha Her and I were supposed to do a joint live workshop in King of Prussia. So that had to be redone to a virtual workshop. So we did that. And I got my first client. And it was a woman from California. And then I said, Why did you work with me? She's like, Well, because you're real, you shared your story of how you had nothing. 
And then now you made over six figures. She's like, I want to work with someone like that. Um, so that's the first thing I learned that, okay, your story is your glory. So after that, I hired a business coach and I went on to start doing presentations. I started speaking in local networking groups and that became national. So I've got clients all across the country from just doing that. So the biggest thing is the mindset, let go of fear. That's what I had to learn because I was operating in scarcity mood. And that's why even when I would make money, I would lose it because that's where you're comfortable with. You have to raise your vibration and where you're comfortable with to be able to receive money and to keep it. Just like I think I talked about in the book about lottery winners, they go broke within two years because they don't feel their worthiness um, to have money. So that's what you have to do is do some positive affirmations, say money comes to me easily and gently. Um, just love on yourself, do some more work. And then that way you could actually handle money. Also then educate yourself too. After we do that woo-woo stuff, you got to read, read my book. That's a great place to start. Whether you have nothing or you're super wealthy, there is tips in there for everybody. And it's concise. Like Kevin said, you get, you get right to the point. <laughs> um, so that's what I would say. It's definitely a mindset. And then after you have the correct mindset, educate yourself on what works and what doesn't financially stay away from get rich quick schemes that is that will leave you broke because you're not going to be that lucky one that makes it if you are that's great but luck is not a strategy or a plan for a solid financial future so that would be my advice did that answer the question um well um if that breeds about a positive relationship with with money yeah um get dawn's book uh, manifest and invest it has um uh, a lot of great information in it. It uh, also has a lot of flow charts in there and has in the back of the book uh, a couple of things that, you know, you can make notes and whatever. So in, in the event that you journal, I think part of your story should be um, the, the the plan that you're going for, forward with. Um, is the conversation with money same with men as it is for women or is there a difference? Hmm. Let me think about that. I... I don't know. I don't. I think it's kind of the same in some respects because you're all men. They might have their egos involved, and then women might be like kind of timid. Um, so they all basically have to start out with educating themselves, be willing, and have an open mind to learn. Um, but men are typically go getters, so they usually don't have a problem. They're very alpha. Um, I myself, I can in my business, I'm very alpha too. So I kind of. That's why I don't really see the discrepancies, but there is there are some women who aren't alpha, which is not a bad thing. Um, so they have more challenges. Like one, they may have grew up in a home where they were taught, OK, you know, the man handle the money. Don't worry about that. Just find a good guy and you'll be taken care of. Um, so they might not feel confident in their own knowledge. And actually, women out there, you guys are actually better investors than men because you guys do your research. Men are just like quick, just do things on the fly sometimes. Um, and again, I'm not to offend anybody. Sorry, don't take that the wrong way. Um, yeah, Don, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you, if anyone's listening to this advice and they get offended from someone being honest with them, they shouldn't be listening to this okay. advice. Um, you know, we talk about this all, all the time. Uh, most of us live in, in an environment and space in our mind that everything is going to offend us. You can't say hello. Yeah. To someone without someone interpreting that you you're asking them out for a date, you can't compliment them on what they're wearing, or yeah. you can't be honest with your opinion, even though they may ask you a question. So I'm going to say, don't worry about offending okay, anyone. I, mean, I am who I am, and I say what I say. Yeah. <laughs> when, when it so. when it comes when it comes to your profit and loss sheet, it's clear as day, it's black and white. It doesn't discriminate against yeah. how you identify, whatever your gender, whatever your pol political affiliations with. At the end of the day, it matters about choice and chance when it comes to your financial. Uh, what risk are you willing to take and what are you willing to sacrifice? So when we talk about uh, sacrifices in the financial world is that there are people that are working everyday uh, jobs that are just um, making a, a good living and would love to invest, but they can't find the extra money. What advice or what conversation would you have to, have to someone? And I, I know this because I talk this within the fitness world. We all have that extra couple of dollars that we spend on things that we could be turning around investing. And these are triggers and habits because we consider a good time. 
So, yeah. you know, I look at the fact that on happy hour, the average drink is between eight and twelve dollars or fifteen dollars. And I look at the fact that in my mind, if you take that money and you invest it in something that's going to give you a better return and not uh, damage your metabolism is take the cut back two drinks, take that money and do something else. But I'm not a financial planner. Uh, how do you have a conversation with someone that has an OK home but would like a better life? has a job that they go to that they they make a decent salary, but they're not 100% happy with their job and they don't feel like they're, they're being appreciated, but they work the job because it pays the bills. And how do you get that person to shift to making an uh, investment within themselves and have their paycheck pay them back? How do you have that conversation? Well, change is hard for most people. So you got to make small changes. So first, the first thing that you should be doing um, my mom taught me this is pay yourself first. Ideally, you want to save 20%. Um, now that might be a struggle for some people. So if you can only do 10, do 10. If you can only do 5%, do 5%. Just save that, push, push that away. You won't miss it. And then you can spend everything else. So that's the simplest kind of way to adjust things. And sometimes when you sit down on a plan, maybe you're contributing 10% to your 401k plan, but the company only matches 5%. Well, there's 5% that you could save somewhere else. So sometimes it's about knowing how to find the money. And that's why I say working with a financial planner is a good way because they could actually help you see, okay, where is money going out unnecessarily that I don't even know that I'm losing? Because again, that 401k match, that's free money. So you only want to get enough, like put in 5% to get the 5% match. Don't put in 10% because you're still going to get that only that 5% match. Take that other 5%, have it work for you, invest it in other places um, so that's a good way to do that. Um, and uh, again, these are the easy ways. If you really want to get analytical, if you still are struggling, sit down. Okay. Do you, like you said, do you really need to have two drinks when you go out? Maybe just have one or um, pregame. Well, go drink at home and then get an Uber. We're not recommending you go out there drunk driving. So um, look, uh, look at your subscriptions. How many people are you watching Netflix, Hulu, Gaia? What else are there? Uh, Prime. Are you watching all those on a regular basis? Cut a couple of those out. Um, is there a better cell phone plan available to you? Are you really using the plan that you have? So just looking at little things like that, little baby steps. But the easiest one that has a great impact is just save 20%. Pay yourself first. You don't even miss it. Then you don't have to worry about spreadsheets and all that stuff. Because a lot of people, they don't want to be bothered with all those details. It's too frustrating. They may do it for a month. But again, it's too hard because they got to write everything down. So if you just... Make it easy. Um, I think that's a great way to start. I, I think that's some some sound advice. I actually gave similar advice to uh, an individual that was embarking on a fitness program, and they said they didn't have the money, but they smoked two cartons of cigarettes um, <laughs> a, a week. But they just had a brand new baby, and I asked what was the uh, amount um, they paid for a carton of cigarettes, it's seventy something odd dollars, and they were smoking oh. two cartons um, per week. They were chain oh. smokers. That's a lot of cigarettes. Yeah. They just had uh, a baby, and I said, if you multiply what you spend per month times the thirty years, and hopefully your child will grow up to be thirty years, do you know how much money that guy was smoking, burning? It was six figures wow. in thirty years. His, if we take that same money from day one for his child and set that aside and the very basics, like you were saying, the 401k program or whatever, if your country is nice, company is nice enough to match it by 5%. My company matches you until you cap off 100%, which is a, a good thing. I got lucky. Um, six figures. And a man will probably never make six figures in his life, but through 30 years, he has spent that much in destroying his health. Yeah. So, and it's actually uh, more than that, too, because the cost of the doctors and all the other health care expenses that he has to pay because everything's higher. Rates are higher on insurances. And then, yeah, just being in the hospital because you're going to get sick. Most likely you're going to get lung cancer. That's what happened to my mom. She smoked when she was younger and she got lung cancer. So there's more. Yeah, it just goes on and on. So just it saves a lot of money by being healthy. <laughs> there you go. So with that said, before I, I, I talk about the five uh, money blocks, I, I do want to talk about that. I talked about that yep. at the, the top of the show. Um, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, is it through social media, a direct number? Go ahead. Tell us how we get in uh, touch. Well, you can you. find me on my website, which is dsfinancialstrategies.com. 
you could search me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, I could give you my work number. I'll give you that. That's 215-660-0288. Um, if you go check me out at the gym, say hi to me. You know, <laughs> I'm working out with Kevin a lot. <laughs> All right. So um, social media, you can find her on uh, LinkedIn. Her name is Dawn. The last name is spelled S-A-N-T-O-R-I-E-L-L. -L. -L. She's a certified planning, um, certified financial pl planner. We are listening to Dawn. She has shared her story with her on how that she has uh, gone from struggling to um, thriving. She is the author of two amazing books. The book that we are showcasing today is Manifest and Invest. And um, that's a beautiful picture of her. Um, and it, we talk about the relationships with, with uh, money, but there's a section in your book that talks about the five money blocks. I did not realize we had five money blocks until I read your book. I got some information. I think I'm pretty good at what I've um, done financially, but I can always do better. So Explain to the reader when they, they uh, read the five money blocks, explain to our listeners about the five money blocks that you show you featured in your book. What sure. are they? It's chapter six. So we'll talk. One is prioritizing other people's needs ahead of your own. Remember when you go on an airplane, they say, okay, put your own oxygen mask on before you put on someone else. Take care of your own self first. Um, a lot of people don't do that. They're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to wait. Uh, who I'll get, I'll get to my retirement, but let me make sure my kids are okay. I see that a lot. Um, parents, they want to support their kids through college, take care of that. And that's very noble, um, to do that. But also you can't do that at the detriment of your retirement because reality is, are your kids really going to want you to live with them when they're starting their own families? Cause you didn't save enough for your retirement. Um, probably not. And do you want to live with your kids? Probably not. So you have to balance that out. I'll take care of yourself too. And, you know, the kids could get loans and do what they have to do. And it also teaches them too, that like there's no free rides. It helps they have some skin in the game. So that's one thing I see a lot. Um, another thing is money secrecy. People don't like to talk about money or their like their spending habits with their spouses if you're married, but you have to have an open discussion. Maybe there, I don't know, a lot of people might've heard of money dates. You Once a month, you sit down with your partner Go over everything um, and review so you're on the same page. And also, if you're going to make a big purchase, ask your partner. Like, set a limit. Like, okay, if I spend more than $5,000, we're going to have a discussion about it. Don't just come home with a new shiny Porsche. And like, you know, it's a teamwork. So like, um, so yeah, that's another one. Money, that's a block that I see. Then one is lacking confidence in your own knowledge. Well, that's an easy one to fix. Educate yourself. There is plenty of resources out there. Um, I'm also a member of Ed Slats Elite IRA Advisory Group. So if you go to irahelp.com, there's a lot of good information on there. Um, if you go to the CFP board website, cfp.org, there is resources on there. Um, so educate yourself and then you're going to gain confidence. Um, so that's another money block. Another one, this I see a lot. Uncertainty and decision paralysis. People are confused. They're, they don't want to make a mistake. So they do too much research. And then they have so many options and so many choices that they do nothing. Um, so that's a money block. So just limit, go to good sources, talk to a trusted financial person and get the information that you need and then make a decision. Don't wait because every time you wait, that's you're costing yourself because Again, the time value of money. It's better to start today um, than waiting into the future. And it's funny, it's statistics that most people, they actually spend more time planning a two-week vacation than they do in their retirement. You have about 30 years you're going to live into retirement. So better, like, spend some time and energy and to get that going for you. Um, another one, too, is lacking trustworthy financial advice. You hear all these things. Your Bernie Madoff years ago, that scandal. Um, there's always people in the news, this advisor did this. So people are scared. So get references. Ask people. Look for best-selling authors. Shameless plug for myself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, and then, I think that was my last one. But yeah, so those are the five different money blocks. Money blocks. 
from there. Quick question. And I, wrote, and I even have a quiz here in the book on page 37. So you can kind of pinpoint your money block. Um, and there's other money blocks too. Like my biggest one was scarcity. Um, so, And then what's really cool too, once you handle these money blocks, chances are it's covered. It's, they're in other areas of your life. You'll see the same situation um, because how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you clear up some issues with your money, you'll see everything else clear up as well. All right. I meant to ask you this question uh, early on when we talk about creating um, a good relationship with money. Does money buy you happiness? No, it, it helps you when you're when you're dirt poor. It helps you get there. But money, when you have money, happiness comes from the inside. So money can buy that. It could cut if you have your basic needs met. Um, yeah, if you're poor and you don't you don't have food, then yes, money will buy you happiness because money will feed you. But after you have those basic needs met, it doesn't buy you happiness. You can see there's tons of people driving around in fancy cars, living in these big houses, and they're not happy. So happiness comes from within. Find your passion and do what makes you happy and makes you feel alive. Um, oh, and here's if you don't know what your like how to find your vibe. Um, do what makes you happy. Like find out like what raises your vibration. To me, it's just turning on the music and starting dancing. And that just makes me come alive. And once you have that, then that's your passion. And then think of other things that make you feel that way. And that's where you should follow. Maybe it's educating. Like Kevin loves helping people and making sure they're um, very fit and healthy and have a good positive mindset. So that's his passion. That's what makes him makes him come alive. And that's where he makes money from. I love helping people too with their finances. So that's where my money comes from. I help people achieve financial freedom and make sure they get out of um, where they're stuck and that they can achieve their dreams. So look around. And also too, like if you're still stuck, like what am I going to do with my life? What's my career? What's my passion? Think about what you did when you were a kid. What I did is I had little spreadsheets and I would be like, okay, every time I got an allowance or when I shoveled stuff, uh, driveways during my drive. I cleaned up the yard. I would get money, and then I had my little spreadsheets. I had for my car CDs, the music CDs back in the day. I don't know if anyone out there even knows what CDs are these days, but they're the version of streaming music. You know, I used to put it on a little player. Um, what else? And my house. So I had those little buckets, and that was like kind of my passion. And then even though I thought it was being in front of audiences and being on stage. Um, but actually, later in life, they both came together because I became a certified financial planner. And now I kind of am a little famous. I wrote two books and now I teach in front of classes. So there I am kind of on stage. I did have my own show one time on um, an internet TV station. So sometimes things don't always go the way you plan. But as long as you stay true to your values and what you're passionate about, you're going to be successful. So don't try to do something just to make money because you're going to be miserable. Even if you do make it, you're going to be empty inside and it's going to cause health issues and everything. And you're just not going to be happy. Happiness is the key to being wealthy because once you're happy, you'll, like you said, wealthy is an emotion. You'll feel wealthy. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you. So for the first time investor, there are a lot of young people that are, are about to graduate and start their life. There are a lot of single moms out there. Mm -hmm that's going through a transition in their life as well as single uh, fathers that have inherited um, the responsibilities of raising their kids. And they, they have, I, let's paint this picture, say they've got good jobs, not great ones. Okay. They have good jobs paying the bills and um, they have a little bit of security there. As, what, what would you advise? And I, I know we can't give financial advice and I'm trying to pick words that will do this because you know, I see on the internet, people say, you know, if you put this into an insurance and a um, uh, a money mutual fund and you do this, you can use the money from this in order to invest and start creating a financial legacy. Or people, you know, are telling you that they have predicted you know, the stock market and you should be buying this in high lows or stay, play it safe and just put your money here or there. Where would be for a person that's just getting into this? The conversation of where do I start? What do I do? Do I go into the stock market when the stock market is very volatile now? Do I, um, I don't have a 401k. Do I start a mutual fund? Um, 
how do I do this? How do I bank on winning at the end of the day? Because I I, I know my in in the black community, you know, the mindset is that you know we're going to have to work. We're not working for retirement. We 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 don't have the mindset to you know save up for those vacations, whatever. We we are just living. And there's a lot of other my um, uh, people that are uh, getting ahead of the game. That's coming out of their environment that. The education when it comes to money, because schools don't teach it. Um, our education system teaches us how to be employees, show up to work, get a paycheck, and just stand in line. That's what it, you know they teach us. How wh- where do, where does one start? What would be your, your advice and direction of how to get into this um, money game and creating a positive relationship with money? Okay, well, again, this is not specific advice. This is just kind of the basics, general one. Like I said, pay yourself first save 20%. So what you would do, all you first also you need to make sure you have an emergency fund about three to six months. So make sure you have that. And if you do work at a job where they do offer a 401k with a match, put money up into the match and that's it. If they don't have that and your income is low enough, then do a Roth IRA for yourself. Start that out um, and just get used to the habit of saving. But like I said, You also, you don't want to have a lot of debt. So don't spend more than you earn. That is a key for starting out too. Um, You need a credit card just to kind of build credit, but don't go out of control with it. If you can't pay for it in full at the end of the month, then you can't afford it. Don't buy it. And you want that emergency fund because God forbid something happens and like, okay, you you need new tires. So what's that? Like $1,500. If you don't have that in your bank account, where are you going to go? You're going to put it on your credit card. So that's why I say set aside for emergency fund so you don't go into the credit card cycle because that's how you get into the debt cycle. You don't have something you can't afford for it. You put it on there because you don't have anything saved. So do that. Make sure you have that saved. Uh, start a Roth IRA because taxes are a huge thing and not a lot of people are talking about it. Taxes are going up. Um, so we want to make sure we have access to tax-free money. So young people, especially, save your money in a Roth. Um, these are the lowest tax brackets you're going to see in your lifetime. So it's only going to go up from here. So Roth, I love Roth IRAs um, in certain circumstances. But if you're just starting out, you probably can't really use uh, life insurance um, as a savings vehicle because you're not going to have enough money to put in there if you're just starting out. Um, I don't know. Our audience, we have probably have different people, different income brackets. So, um, But if you're not able to fund a Roth IRA because you make too much money, that is a good option um that and your Roth 401k at work so it's kind of hard but that's like kind of general advice because there's so many different people out there and each person's situation is unique but save do not spend every penny you make pay yourself for save that 20 percent especially when you're just coming out of school you're not you never earned this kind of money so you're not missing anything so just get into that habit and then every time you get a raise too, save a portion of that so because usually what happens is people keep increasing their lifestyle once they get they have more money, but save a portion of that lifestyle. Um, So that's how you can get ahead uh, better. And like you said, yeah, working for a company, it has some perks, but being an entrepreneur is one of the greatest things. And to do that, though, if you if you desire to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have to have an emergency fund because there's times like if you heard my story, it's a struggle and it's very scary out there and you may not have anyone to help you. Um, So that's what I would say kind of for the basics. Now, if you have a different situation, like there's a whole entire planning and there's different things. So I can't just splurt out everything, but that's kind of like the basics that will get you by. All right. And, and ladies and gentlemen, we are talking to author, motivational speaker, or keynote speaker, certified financial planner, Don, Don um, Santuccello. Rollo. I think Great. I said it right. I got to get that right. Yeah. All right. Um, she's given a lot, a lot of great, great advice. And I'm glad you brought up debt because um, 75% of our college graduates are graduating from um, Ivy League schools, um, Big Ten schools, and they're graduating with an enormous amount of debt, which that's a whole conversation l- later on when we talk about our education system. Um, and they're graduating and entering jobs that they normally would have gotten if they had spent two or three years in the workforce and they've gotten the same job in anyway and got the same um, pay salary. When you talk about debt, 
and you're already in six figures debt coming out and you're only 20 something odd years of age. And we're talking about having good relationships with money when we spent the last four or five years, every Friday night hitting the local pubs, pizza and having a good time or whatever. The mindset and relationship with money, those five blocks that we talked about money um, are not there, even though we may have come from home and the cushion that we have from mom and dad um, is starting to become an air mattress and it's being deflated because it has a leak because that leak is called life. Yeah. How, how do we how do we educate people and get them out of debt and turn around that cycle so they can thrive financially and have the experience of having money be a tool and not money be their life? Mm-hmm. Well, are we talking specifically about student loan debt? Yes. I mean, let's get let's just talk in general, debt in general. In general. How debt do you get out okay. of debt? Because there's people that specialize in helping you with your student loan debt. And I don't think that they're ever going to cancel a student loan debt, first of all. So if if you guys are out there hoping that's going to be you, um, don't bank on it. If they do, that would be great. But there's just too much other stuff. There's not enough money to do that. Um, But yeah, just make sure, like I said, have that emergency fund. Don't use your credit card. Don't buy something you can't afford. You don't need to keep up with everybody else because everybody else who's in that situation is broke. You want to be broke? No. Um, Go take on extra jobs. That's what I did. Like I said, I bartended, um, I helped my neighbor do construction, do whatever it takes. Debt, you don't want to be in debt because it's just going to be a vicious cycle. Like if you have your credit cards, I've seen some people have 24% interest. Oh, and it's crazy. Oh, and here's another thing. I just saw one client, this poor woman, um, I think she got taken advantage of, but like she paid all this program. She's like in her 60s, she paid all this money for this program. They were going to help her find a business and do something. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. I'm like, what did you pay for? It's like, oh, we just have all these resources. So if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So don't embark on those get rich quick schemes or, you know, just the basics. Just save money, whatever you can. If you don't have enough money, you maybe you're living in a place where you can't afford, then go get another job, another part time job. Now we live in a day and age where it's easy to make money. You could go use your car to go drive for Uber. Um, if you don't want people in your car, you could do drive Uber Eats. Um, there's so many different things like, like, uh, Tony Robbins says, think of something where you could add value and go do that. Um, you could babysit or something. There's always ways to make extra money. So just think a little bit. Um, and that brings extra cash flow, uh, saving what you can and just not don't go into the, and then, oh, here's another thing. I see people want houses. Um, that's a new thing. Like, oh, we have to buy a house because that's what our parents did. Good. Well, house rates are like really expensive. They're like, so maybe you just live in an apartment for a little bit. Um, so you don't have to just do things because that's what your parents did. Um, so then people just get these big houses, these big mortgages, especially now with their interest rates so high. And then they're like stuck at home. They can't do anything because they have such a huge mortgage payment. Um, so maybe if you rent a couple of years, there's nothing wrong with renting. Um, so just different ways to avoid going into unnecessary debt. And do you need a car? Yeah, you need a car, but do you need a, uh, the newest BMW series? No, like, uh, maybe a Honda will work just fine for you. Not saying you won't get to have that, but right now kind of just like live within your means. And once you have money, you will be able to go get those other things. You just can't have it right now, possibly. Um, so that's kind of what I would say live within your means if you need to make extra money, go take on an extra job. It's just temporary. Like sometimes you have to go sideways to move forward. Um, educate yourself. That's also important too, because that's going to push you ahead too. Um, but don't spend, if, if you're coming out of debt, but don't you don't have to go spend uh, $1,000 on another degree. Um, there's lots of books out there you could read, internet um, classes. So um, that, those are things that will kind of help you to avoid getting in debt. And ladies and gentlemen, I told you we're going to have a show of shows. And, you know, I am lucky enough to surround myself with people. And I always say say surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. And if you're this not this if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get out of the room. I am always surrounded by highly uh, effective and efficient people that are always giving great advice. And this is the reason why I wanted to share their secrets to their success. How they um, take simple steps and they lead to big ideas and big out- outcomes, turn bad habits into good habits, small behaviors leading to 
big outcomes. And um, Dawn has definitely laid down the foundation for those of you that are just tuning in and you're listening to this uh, for the first time. We've hit on um, and talked about how to have a great relationship with money. We talked about the five building blocks of money. We um, talked about women and men and relationships with money. We talked about how to get out of debt. But the reason why we're doing this show, because Dawn has some secrets that why she is such a highly effective and efficient person and living a highly effective and efficient life um, in the financial planning space. So Dawn, if you were to share, I don't know if your list is short, yeah. longer, or yeah, so forth. Got my little what, list here. What, what, what is your, your, your list? How, how do you live a highly effective life? What's your secret? Okay. One, you never give up. I had people tell me when I was getting into this business, oh my God, you're going to fail. That's the hardest job. There's a 95% failure rate within the first five years. I don't listen to that because I know I'm going to make it. So I just have that. I'm like, I am going to do whatever it takes. So never give up. Um, also one, I operate with a high degree of integrity and honesty. I say it like it is. I do what I say I'm going to do. I show up. Um, that's important too. Half the battle is just showing up. I also, I have my secret manifestation prayer that I do with myself for anything I want in life. I do it for clients. I do it for people I meet. And it's really powerful to help you create the life that you love. Um, that's one thing I do, do that for everything. Like even getting parking spaces, I do that. Um, have a team. I set up my business to be virtual. So I have my money management team. I have my power planners that help me run my financial plans. So I spend most of my time just meeting with people. Um, so I love that. And that's very efficient and allows me the flexibility because my life, I love to be flexible, um, to move around a lot, to go on vacations, do what I love and still be able to work from wherever. So that's why I love having a virtual practice. And what else? Pick a career that you love. As you can tell, I love doing what I do, educating people. So that's another thing. And having a good place, love where you live. Um, cause I know when I don't live where I live in a place I'm not happy with, I'm just miserable. So getting to a place where you feel home and that could be anywhere for you. Um, that's another important working out that really having a good body, strong mind, um, healthy, that just like your foundation, like every health is everything like health is your wealth. So you need, I do that. And then I also do yoga nidra every day, which is a kind of guided meditation, which calms your mind. Um, and although I probably should do even more, I do it twice a day, but I'm just high vibing and energetic because I'm so excited about life and it's just um, great. And then also feel your feelings. Um, there's, my life isn't perfect. There's times I cried just the past three, couple of weeks ago, I was like devastated. So you cry it out. Don't try to let it go. Just cry it out. And then it just rebuilds, learn the lessons from that and then just keep moving forward. So yeah, don't let anything or anyone knock you down. It may be temporarily, but you get back up and you just keep on going because you're invincible and you're amazing and you deserve to live your best life. And thank you. Thank you, Dawn. It's the reason why I had you on the, the show today, because you are a person that we should know. You are a you're, you're living your, your best dream life and you're true. You're honest. And um, that's a very rare um, commodity in our business world today, because everyone's got a uh, hustle and your hustle happens to be your authentic in what you do. You're passionate. You take everything personal. And um, I, I know your story. I know the story behind your tears. But I also know when you you dive into something, you, you, you go into the deep end of the pool. All right. And you come out with gold. You are three feet away from gold. And for those of you that are listening, we have Dawn here. She's a certified financial planner. I wanted to share her secrets to her success and her highly uh, efficient uh, lifestyle. We got a chance to listen to her story. Dawn, um, email address. Can they get in touch with you? Yes. Social media. Um, are you on Instagram, LinkedIn, or any any place? How do we get in touch with you? Yes, you can email me, Dawn at dsfinancialstrategies.com, which happens to be my website, dsfinancialstrategies.com. You can go to Facebook. You can find me there, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, there was that's yeah, just just Google me. Everything will pop up. I'm on Amazon if you want to go buy my book. If you want a personal um, 
autograph copy. I also have those as well. You can reach out to me and I can get you one of those. And yeah, Kevin, what, I want to what book are we going to buy? Because you 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 brought your book Manifest up so fast. and invest. Live your best life. Get your money right. And yeah. that's on Amazon.com. Yep, both that's on books. Amazon.com. Uh, and anywhere else books are sold online. And it's also if you're out in Newtown, Pennsylvania, they have a copy over there as well. Um, but like I said, reach out to me. I'll be able to send this out to you. And Kevin, thank you so much. This was so much fun. I tried to oh, talk don't, slow, don't, but I don't didn't go still into it. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Okay. I have one more question. It just popped up sure. in my head. This is not a part of my notes. Um, H, too old, too too young to invest. When should we start? Uh, how early and how old? I mean, if someone's in their 60s, is that too old to invest or plan? Yes or no? Nope. The best day to start is 20 years ago. And the next best day is today. So just start investing. Even if it's a little bit, if you can only do 50 bucks a week, 50 bucks a month because you're younger. But you will save yourself a lot. If you do it, the earlier you do it, the better. Because then you're going to like, someone like me, I'm 45. So if you're 20 years old, you're going to have to save a lot less than I do for us to break even to have the same amount by the time we're 65. Um, but if you are older, it's you're never again, it's never too late. Just start investing because as long as you have life, then you have time to invest. Yes, sir. Like that. Yes, ma'am. Like yes. As long as that, you have life, you have time to invest. <laughs> you, you, you should write that down and put it on a shirt. I, I want to personally yeah. thank since you brought that up. Tom Clemens, my football coach, was the first person that taught me to, to take $25 out, out of my um, biweekly paycheck and put it into a mutual fund, which um, 30 years later uh, reaped uh, great rewards afterwards. So thank you, Tom um, Clemens. Uh, I want to thank my loyal fans and listeners. Um, you know how I feel. You know, I'm probably the only podcast that has ever had people that have basically had um, this one question asked and their dreams come true. So Don, I'm going to ask you a question because I've had five people to date. I'm going into my third year of doing this podcast and we've been consistently producing every single week. Um, I always say the people that subscribe to Talking With Kevin and Son and my other um, podcast, Motivational Sundays with Kevin and Friends, they're not people that drive by an accident. They're people that stop to help. And to this date, I've had five people that have been asked the same question that five told, well, not five strangers, a handful of strangers had granted someone their life's wish. And most of us go through our whole life and not having one dream come true. And we've had strangers made five people that have been guests on this show, their life's dream come true. So if I were to ask you, your one ask. And I, I will give you some lead way if you have more than one, because I know you okay. want to save the children. You want to <laughs> save the world. You want to save the planet. That's a big ask. But if you had one ask and one of our listeners could make that come true, what would your ask be? ASK. Hmm. It would be, well, I have many things. But I guess one, I'll do one personal one and then one business one. Is that okay? Uh, this is like your show. Go ahead. Well, my personal one. You already know this, Kevin. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. I would like to find my dream guy who is equal to me, where I could be his dream girl, he could be my dream guy, and we could just build a life where we just have a great life and amplify each other and grow and just have a great love. Um, okay, that's that. Now, business-wise, I want to spread my message. I want to, I would love to be on Oprah on Super Soul Sunday. Um, or just get into the media and share my book and any speaking engagements. I love to be on stage educating people on, okay, this is how do you invest? This is how you handle um, your tax situation, how to reduce your taxes. I just love educating people. So I love being out there, being in front of big audiences and also motivating them too. Um, so that would be good too, to do like some motivational speaking for anyone just to inspire people like, hey, if I could do it, you can do it. Anybody could do it. I'm not special. I'm just a regular person who just never gave up. All right. So with that said, um, I, I always put a little bit and said, make your ask big. You know, I'm going to ask for you, ladies and gentlemen, okay. if you have an, a stadium, football stadium yeah. or arena in order to um, house 30, 40,000 people, maybe 100,000 people, invite God. Yes. To speak and give advice, not only on financial, but life in, in, in general. If you happen to be at an individual that's at a special place in his life that is deserving 
of someone as wonderful as Dawn, and you're at that place in your life that you feel like you deserve more in life and you want to put an exclamation point on a relationship and grow and thrive, then call Dawn. Don't waste your time because she's cute. Pick <laughs> calling her up or whatever. And so that would be my ask. I always put a definition because I, I think asking for Oprah is a is a nice I- idea, but you should ask for more. Mm-hmm. All right. So I, I, I will grant you more. I will grant you a a life where you can thrive and travel the world to be on stage and and speak to hundreds of thousands of people and be rewarded for your efforts Mm -hmm. and change lives. So with that said, again, to my loyal fans and listeners, I hope that you enjoyed the show. Dawn is one of those people you should know. I hope that you take her secrets to her highly successful and effective life and make them part of yours and add to your, your list. And if you're interested in being a guest on our show, if you know someone that is one of these highly effective people that I may not um, know and be in my circle, you're more than welcome. Go to info at rmkproductions at dot org, info at rmkproductions dot org. If you like what you've heard, and I will tell you, I'm very specific in, the, in my friends and family, only subscribe or follow. If you're one of these people that have a high call to action, I love that people l- listen to my show, but I love it when people get involved and make a difference in people's life. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow. Share if you like, and let me let I'll let you know. I appreciate you just for listening. Well, that's good too. So this is Kevin McLemore. Um, I'm the host of Talking with Kevin and Son. I just had Dawn on, a personal friend and her secrets. And my grandfather always said, when you get to a point in life that you can change someone's life, it's your duty to do so. Reach one, teach one. And with that said, we will fade to black. We are out.